What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man, and today we got Kendrick Lamar won, but at what cost? Now, if you're not knowing, Kendrick and you know Drake had a little beef. Well, I don't know what the fuck with him. That shit was funny though. <clears throat> you better not have to put your set on block one. <laughs> well, anyways, and it's by Hip Hop Madness. Make sure to go subscribe. Posted two days ago. Right at the end, let's get to video. As the dust begins to settle on the hip hop civil war, it seems like the real damage is coming into focus. Mm. While no blood was spilled, it's safe to say that things haven't been this ugly in rap beef since the days of Biggie and Pop, with Kendrick Lamar basically dissecting every aspect of Drake's identity and not only holding up a mirror to Drake to look at himself, but show the world what he believes to be the real man behind all the fame and fortune. In Euphoria, Meet the Grams, and Not Like Us, hip hop was given three of the most blockbuster violations of an artist that the culture has ever seen. And while Drake did put up an admirable fight, he just didn't have the ammo to counteract what Kendrick was putting out there. As a result, only diehard stands of Drake would realistically argue that he'd escaped unscathed from this, or that he even competed on the same level. Who is rapping better? I think that Kendrick is rapping no, better. No, you I think do. Kendrick is rapping better? You think he's putting out better songs? That <laughs> record is not that good. I don't it, know what the... That record would have been amazing if Drake really does have a in your good, door. He just... did rap about it, now y'all saying <laughs> you mad he rapped about it. <laughs> y'all talking about hit with over 1 million dislikes on his diss track slash Damn. concession speech on the hard part six the aftermath of kendrick's assault on his image has basically left drake stranded on an island where he faces a shift in public opinion on one side and the wrath of his peers on the other and while this potentially has major ramifications for drake going forward it also might be the beginning of a major cultural shift let's break it down for starters Kendrick's dismantling of Drake's public image has people assessing whether or not he was really ever truly a part of the culture or simply someone who just exploited it for financial gain. Mm. An artist whose music always focuses more on the personal rather than political and often retelling meaningless stories rather than something of substance, Dot's continued use of the existing narrative that Drake is a culture vulture has people talking about Drake in a whole new light. A man whose main gripe with Drake has always been his refusal to show up for black issues. Ebro explained that Kendrick's exploration of Drake's mixed background wasn't just race baiting, as some people have tried to paint it. Instead, it was used to explore the ways he stands for nothing in a culture that was born of the need to communicate important ideals to the masses. The reason Kendrick doesn't like Drake is beyond just, I don't like you as a person, which he, he said that too. He doesn't like what Drake represents in hip hop. He doesn't like that this individual is not authentic, doesn't represent anything of value to black heritage and black culture, isn't in touch with his blackness enough. I think that that is also an important detail because hip hop, as we know it today, is an extension of the black nationalist movement. It is a tool to share information and educate ourselves when the establishment doesn't do so and also to make sure that we are represented towards each other and for each other that's a part of what the hip-hop thing is and the basis of it but it goes deeper than that as in the wake of kendrick's comments critics are beginning to wonder if drake only uses his black identity when it stacks the odds in his favor you being a mixed person explain to people from your perspective the difference in between how Drake does it in this hip hop space as the pose of somebody like J. Cole. You know, J. Cole spends his time doing commentary about society and yeah. about his community and the places he comes the from, issues, which is the, in touch within with our the culture. black heritage yeah. part yeah. of hip hop. Yeah. J. Cole is in touch with that and understands the importance of that. One of the issues that I think even the OVO team has had was the Childish Gambino thing when I was up here talking about, yo, bro, don't. Um, this is America because you don't ever have anything to say, which is once again the indictment of Kendrick. Kendrick is not saying Drake is not black. Kendrick is saying you only act black when it's time for you to use blackness to make money. Mm. When it comes to any other black issues or black anything, we don't see you. By using an... That is true. No cap. I racial rapper like J. Cole as an example. In my opinion, Ebro perfectly depicts how Cole takes on the cultural responsibility that Drake has avoided for most of his career. All the while, Drizzy has reaped the rewards of it at every opportunity. Now, it's unfair to say that Drake has never shown up for the black community. After all, at the height of the BLM movement, he donated $100,000 to national bailout. But there's also a case to be made that this is the bare minimum he could have done when you consider the profit he's made from the culture. Ultimately, the issue with Drake comes down to code switching, and unfortunately, there are plenty of clips from his past as a child actor where he seems to purposefully distance himself from the black culture to integrate into white environments. Just look at this clip where he mocked the Toronto accent, which takes influence from Jamaican, East African, and Middle Eastern diaspora. The guys at our school, instead of addressing people like the brute, they say... Mm -mm -mm. 
Drake, Drake, Drake. 1.5 million dislikes? Yeah. That, that shit's crazy. No, no cap. Saying, like, what are you guys doing? Hey, man's like you. It's really ignorant. Then, years on, he repped that same accent, all the while appearing ignorant of its origins. Our accents? I don't know who started talking like that. Yeah. I'd love to meet that guy. I literally yeah. want to meet the first Toronto man of all time. I yeah. don't know who he is. Fast forward to when Drake decided he wanted to be a rapper, and suddenly, his disdain for the Toronto accent was gone. Instead, he was claiming it as a part of his culture. But to make matters worse, Drake is simultaneously facing darker accusations. Years before Kendrick started throwing out allegations about Drake in the OVO camp, certain figures had always side-eyed Drake's alleged admiration for younger women. In fact, mm. famous comedian Shane Gillis even predicted his downfall. On an episode of Matt and Shane's secret podcast in the summer of 2019, he basically foretold what's now happening to Drake, right down to the timeline. I want to be on the record. Drake's going to be, he's on that R. Kelly tip. Drizzy Drake <laughs> likes him young. Somewhat known already. This is one of those things where you got to say something. Like, remember Louie, that whole thing? We knew about that. And we were just like, I don't know. Drizzy Drake's into the young ones. He's going to get got in the next five years. Notice he mentions Louis C.K. here. If you're not up on that story, the famous stand-up was in front of women in the comedy scene and everybody knew. Known to affiliate with the younger generation, Drake has some strange ties to teenagers in the past. So you been doing this, Drake. You been doing this, nasty motherfucker. Oh, 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 oh. But now it's coming to the light. Oh, stay with us. Stay with us, y'all. So we just texted each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. I mean, I've only like texted him, but he's so nice. Like. Then you have the whole scenario with Bella Harris. She was born in 2000, bro. Why the f is this flipped up with her in 2016, laying up on her, bro? And then as soon as she turned 18, this took her out on a date, bro. Now, back then, people like Millie Bobby Brown came to his defense. But they're notably staying very silent these days now that they're not only older, but things that are less defensible as simply friendliness have come to light. As for his interest in Bella Harris, her claim was that he was a fan of women's high school basketball. Like, that's a perfectly normal sentence to say as a 30-year-old man. Now, we are in no way making claims here or trying to imply anything, but between SZA having to clarify that she wasn't underage and Georgia Smith being just 19 when she hooked up with the 31-year-old Drake, the whole thing wasn't a great look to begin with. But now, post-Kendrick's exposed attempts, Drake's teenage fever comment section on YouTube is now flooded with the worst claims a musician could imagine. You say the word, why second guess? I should have stayed. Why did he second guess on teenage fever? Answer me. You say the word, I'm on the way. What word? It's a go? Y'all gonna look back one day and say, <laughs> say, oh, it was right there. An artist who is always focused on the pop charts and therefore the youth, Drake has always fought to retain that fan base in his career by moving with that sound. Now, if you want to be a commercial superstar, that's just good business sense. But from a darker perspective, now revealed by Kendrick's diss tracks, it implies that Drake isn't just cornering that market to stay hot, but to retain access to the younger audience. For one thing, it explained why he now has a 26-year-old in Lil Yachty writing the bulk of her loss, why he flew out a fresh-faced Ice Spice when Munch popped off, or why it was rumored that he just recently signed four bats to a one-album deal. For a clearer example, before the days of Not Like Us, it was easy for academics to throw Drake some bail for focusing on a younger demographic. I never even thought about, like, yeah, Drake is singing about a 27 year old. I was just like, that's what music is. Like, if anybody sung about a 40 year old with all due respect, I'll be like, what the I think hip hop is always kind of meant to kind of appeal to that age range. Unless you're going to do, like, some Jay Z, you're married and you're doing 444. If you're going to be rapping about partying, going out, casually dating, you're going to be rapping about that age range, whether you name drop it or not. But what's telling is that even with Act being such a verifiable Drake stand, he has since acknowledged that Drake now has to move completely different. He's probably going to have to keep his affairs with women either much more secretive or not be pictured with the chick who just graduated college anymore. Because they're now planting and put this jacket on him. They usually do, if you're not a you're a groomer. In his opinion, songs like Teenage Fever will have to be a thing of the past, as too many people could interpret certain bars as lusting after young ladies. In fact, there's every chance that it might change his whole writing process. So now with Drake, when he was writing a rhyme and he's not thinking, yo, nobody's gonna think I'm writing about kids because this line is meant to be something else. He's talking about it like it was a dream of his since he was a kid. He's now got people looking at lyrics, trying to get different meanings now. So now when Drake's writing the next slap, he probably got a line that is fire on paper, but it's like, yo, these motherfuckers gonna take it this way now. Offering no defense rather than, I'm too famous to be an abuser, this presents a dangerous crossroads for Drake's career. Drake fans have endured a lot over the years, but for some, these allegations are just a step too far. The only thing you need to be focusing on are denouncing all these allegations. Prove that you didn't do this. 
If you can't, pack it up. I'll be deleting everything from OVO. I'm done. You engage in that type of bro, I cannot support you in any type of way, shit before. Now relieved of his ability to make club smashes about casual sex without a few jokes being made at his expense, Kendrick's verbal demolition of Drake means that this isn't the only part of his creative process that'll have to change. As now, he's basically incapable of heading to Atlanta without the colonizer narrative. Can Drake put out a record with an artist from Atlanta and people ain't gonna look at it funny? I think whatever move he makes, people will look at it funny. He wouldn't or wouldn't as often make street records just for the streets. Right. He does that because the streets in this hip hop means something. They mean something to your credibility. I believe that Drake has to think more carefully about making those moves now because it's been exposed. When talking about large scale issues that this new power balance in hip hop represents, this banishment from Atlanta is one that will definitely hurt Drake. But the idea that anyone would want to get on a track with him at the minute is hypothetical. Because for now, it feels like a lot of people are distancing themselves from Drake. When Drake dropped Family Matters, the comments were flooded with streamers standing shoulder to shoulder with him as opposed to rappers. Meanwhile, someone like Lil Yachty, who was mentioned directly on Euphoria, stayed out of it. Even when he liked a tweet which brought up K-Dot's apparent shady history, he cowardly said it was an accident when news outlets picked it up. Similarly, 21 Savage only gave his views on the Metro and Drake aspect of the beef, instead of showing support for him with anything going on with K-Dot. Going back to his crew of yesteryear, Wheezy and Nicki Minaj have strangely also remained silent. In Nicki's mm. case, this is a stark difference from how she responded to the story of Adidon, where she actively supported him on Twitter. So why are they bailing on him? Well, the answer is that while there's many things rappers will defend you for, what he's being accused of now isn't one of them. As a result, mm. they don't want their image tarnished by associating with him right now. Because mm. from hip hop heads to high schools, the perception of Drake has shifted. I, up until today, taught at a very Drake-centric high school. Rich Baby Daddy is the most frequently requested song to put on my class playlist. But today, I walk in and I can feel that there has been a tectonic shift. I have like one Drake defender in each class, if that. And honestly, I feel bad for those kids because they were getting screamed at. Although only time will tell if these effects upon Drake's image are long-lasting or temporary, one thing that seems evident is that he is likely done with beefing when it's always left him battle-scarred and with a hole in his public image. I think this proved to me that Drake is completely done with being, he's completely done with rap battles. He can't do that anymore. It's not because of ability, but because of where he is. Kendrick Lamar's numbers, like, he's about to go number one next week with the new song he just dropped to Drake. You're gonna give this guy his number one solo record of his whole career because you would engage with him. For one thing, we need to fact check Ak here, because Humble is actually Kendrick's first solo number one. It just didn't debut there. But that doesn't change the fact that Not Like Us has now broken Drake's own record for biggest debut with God's Plan. Now, that's got a sting for Drake, who has always been about the numbers. But so too will the fact that K-Dot is now in a more fortuitous position on the other end. Because while Kendrick's numbers are up with his catalog soaring over 49%, Drake is actually down 3%. For all... This is why you don't fuck with K-Dot. He's him! K Dot has been that motherfucking nigga ever since Mad City. If I rose in clips, I'll get along. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. But this is not to be on fucking K Dot's dick. Cause I know how y'all people be. But before this be before this shit even started, I was like, bro, if Drake this is if Drake this is K Dot, it's over with. That nigga's not fucking playing. He had he had J. Cole apologize and now he got this nigga jerk in fucking shambles, bro. K dot that nigga. And Drake, we should have been watching your ass more. No cap. Drake undeniably <coughs> took the L here, but it doesn't mean that Kendrick escaped scot free either. For one thing, True. his fan base are now aware that he has the ability to drop more frequently and just chooses not to. While this is likely a Pandora's box he didn't want to open, you also have the small matter of the power vacuum that's in place if Drizzy is really forced to bow out after all this. Naturally, people like Ak believe that he'll have to move more like Drake in order to take the top spot, which requires a level of being present in the culture. But when you really think about it, that wasn't the point of the whole beef. Despite claiming the top spot on Like That, which started this all off, Kendrick doesn't want to inhabit the same space as Drizzy. He just wanted to create a void where that could be filled by someone, anyone, else. When he said it was just Big Me, he wasn't talking about dominating the charts. He was talking about sheer lyrical ability and creating the best music. A man who claims to live a boring life because he loves peace? Kendrick isn't interested in extracting anything else that Drake had, apart from his credibility. But as the debris clears and we begin to look at a future where Drake is minimized and Kendrick's reach has probably only expanded, there are questions to be asked if this was all worth it.
Now, if Drake truly is everything Kendrick says he is, then there's no denying that getting rid of him was basically a public service. But there's also collateral damage to what's been said. As Tay Barrow said in her Guardian piece, there is a case to be made that while these two titans of the industry were squaring off, the women who were caught in the middle, whether it was Kendrick's wife or Drake's alleged victims, really lost out from the battle. These men are casually rapping about child and harboring secret children that they've presumably known about for years, but only chose to reveal when they were fighting. And using each other's possible victims as ammunition in a battle that has nothing to do with these women isn't just perverse and morally reprehensible. It reveals the degree to which hip-hop and the music industry as a whole continue to protect terrible men, even while their behavior, or alleged behavior, yeah. is an open secret. And although people might feel like it's rich coming from someone with his history, this is also a point made by Charlemagne, who felt that the exposés weren't done for genuine reasons. I don't like seeing these brothers me too in each other over a rap feud. To me, that's corny. Like, if you're gonna call somebody a if you're gonna call someone a woman, you gotta have some real proof. It's for this reason that The Roots Quest Love actually thinks that there were no real victors here. When asked his views, Ben Staples believed it detracted from the real issues facing hip hop and black creatives. In fact, he went as far to suggest that it basically set the culture back years. That record label just folded all of his independent labels and subsidiaries into each other. None of them exist no more. They fired all the heads of the labels, and if they didn't, they turned them into glorified ARs. They cut off 50% of the people who work in all these departments. Most of those people is us, people of color that come from hip hop and R&B and these other things, right? Personally, I think we better than that. I think uh, we deserve better than that because we've been saying for decades that we want people to respect black music and black art and black people. And I think for that to happen, we gotta respect ourselves. Respect ourselves and right. they don't. No cap, no cap, but to now nah, let's get let's get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, if if those shits does come out true, Drake, Drake might as well, you know, and then Kendrick just made it to a point where if he doesn't, you know, then the black then the music is just going, you know, shit not gonna really, you know. But also. He done made it to a point where it's like now shit about people can't even rap no more about having you know because now it's just it's gonna be all over the place you know on top of that there's just so much shit going on with the beef but yeah let's read these comments nobody won and nobody will be listening he just tried you know, a few months now about his beef was like Tell them in the hip hop community collectively just to use this pictures or entire Nicki Minaj cousin. Mm. Mm. It's girls high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, he's fun. These fuckers are funny. But anyways, it's boy OGT main signing out. Kitty.